Hi, good morning. It's Diana with Friday Feather Facts. We're going to talk about owl research today, and particularly in regards to the long-eared owl. Now, owl research has been a while in coming because it's hard to do. Well, you may ask, what makes it so hard? Well, these guys are, most species are nocturnal, so it's dark, you can't see, okay? Uh, another reason is that they typically roost and nest in forested areas, so that makes them harder to see. They have great camouflage, if you look at his feather coloring. And another thing that owls do that's different than other birds is if a, if a human is walking near them, they don't immediately flush. They get very still and rely on their camouflage. This guy can make himself very tall and thin, and he looks just like a branch. Very different from the, when he's squinched down like that. So, besides the fact that some owl species, most of them in fact, are cavity dwellers. So they're inside a hole in a tree somewhere. They're not sitting up on a branch all the time. So how have the owl researchers found them? Finally, they have. Now there's some research being done. First of all, they go out in the daytime in an area that they think is good owl habitat, and they look for whitewash, which would be owl poop on the ground under a tree or on the tree itself. They look for owl pellets, which are regurgitated parts of what the owl doesn't digest. And if they find pellets and whitewash, they know there's an owl that roosts and or nests in that tree. Now, another problem is that some species of owls, like this long-haired ear guy here, use nest, stick-built nests that other birds have built in previous years. So a researcher might notice a magpie nest or a crow nest uh, and say, oh, well, that's just a crow nest. Well, it was last year, but this year it's an owl nest. So there's lots of tricky things about doing owl research. What they have discovered recently, though, is that long-eared owls are extremely plentiful. They are everywhere, practically anyway, around the world with large populations of them. The ones in the U.S. were studied in the Northeast, and what was found is that whereas most owls are solitary birds and only come together during nesting season, the long-eared owls are very sociable. They roost together in groupings of maybe four or five up to 150. So there's one reason the long-eareds have been studied. They're easier to find because there's more of them in one place. If you've only got one bird in a three-mile area, that's going to be hard to find that bird. If you've got 75 to 100 of them, you might just find at least one. So besides finding how social they are, they also discovered by putting radio transmitters on some of them that they migrate. Not owls, all owl species migrate, but the long-eared does. Hard to study its migration though, because it doesn't go to the same place every time. Or at the same time, they change when they leave, they change where they go. And it's thought that what they're doing is looking for plentiful prey areas that have lots of small rodents. And that changes from time to time. Something else they discovered when they followed them during migration and looked at them where they went, they found a disproportionate number of females. Now, where are the males? Why didn't they migrate? Well, they stayed home. They stayed back in the northeastern forests and it's thought that they were protecting their favorite nesting sites. And if they left, then somebody else might take over. So they stay put and they take a risk that there will be enough prey to sustain them throughout the winter. Now, females are larger than males, as true of all raptors, and they need to eat more because they're the ones who are laying the eggs and taking care of those babies. So they need to go where the prey is for sure plentiful so they can get enough to eat to take care of their nests. So that's just some of the things that have been discovered since they've been able to research these guys. 
and we're finding out how incredible they are. This little guy has been with Montana Wild for, oh, probably six, seven years now. And he is our most alert and anxious of our resident raptors. He is always aware of what's going on around him. Now that we know how social they are, and they usually nest and roost in groupings, that may explain his anxiety a little. He's all by himself. So, now we understand you better, big guy, and we're hoping that we can help you more now that we know what's going on. So, thanks for checking in, everybody. Hey, I haven't said this for a while, but if you have suggestions or comments, please leave them in the comments box. We do read those things. Thanks.